the battle to become emperor has begun. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another Rise of the Three Kingdoms modded online battle from Medieval 2 Total War. In today's engagement, we are going to have a free-for-all battle as each party tries to strive to become emperor. Over on this side, we have Harry Hobbit's army, which is looking extremely fierce with bowmen already unleashing their quivers. Over here, we have the force led by Genku. He's going to be repping the battlefield with his heavy cavalry and a sturdy line of infantry covered by these thunder carts, which are basically mangonels, which will rain down fiery rocks on the opponent. And all the way over here, we do have another army led by Deadman. He is going to be coming up the rear and hopefully cleaning up what is whatever is left as these two sides do go ahead and face off. So if you guys want to continue to see more of these Rise of the Three Kingdoms battles on the lead up to Three Kingdoms Total War, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and obviously by dropping a like on the video it really does help out and if you do enjoy this content then be sure to subscribe as it does help out the channel and you always get notified whenever we do post a video which we do do every single day so yeah let's just go ahead and wrap this battle onto normal speed and get this bad boy started as the artillery is already firing any big hits oh that's not a bad hit right there that is not a bad hit whatsoever. And that is going to push Hobbit's army forward pretty quickly. We've got another artillery shot coming in. Yep, big money right there. In Medieval 2, the artillery shots are just always so beautiful to watch. And that is going to go ahead and force Hobbit's army forward. He has a pretty strong line of these heavy armored infantrymen. And they're going to be advancing forward to try and get, you know, close this distance to nullify this artillery as another massive hit comes in. Hitting some of these really, really expensive infantrymen right on the back of him. There's a reason why these guys are so far back. is because they don't want to, they want to avoid being hit by missile fire and all other forms. But we are getting a big infantry push up here. And it looks like Genku is going to have to quickly try and reform up his battle line to protect. I was, don't think he was expecting this army to come this far forward at him right away at the beginning of the battle. So he is actually going to go ahead and have to quickly move his hand light swordsman into position. But these hand light swordsmen are not really going to stand up up against this heavy armoured infantry coming in from Hobbit's army right there. And even though both sides are quickly forming up, they're going to be ready to move into one another. And these guys are both in shield war, I believe. However, on the back line, he does have some of these heavy, heavy sword infantry men with these, you know, massive great swords. They're going to be able to get stuck in, but the infantry lines are now going to clash, and both sides are going to come flying in, looking for blood. I think the Genku's army on the left-hand side, though, the infantry line just is not going to hold that well. Especially with cavalry and infantry coming around the side. There is actually already a massive cavalry engagement. You can see Hobbit's army there in the grey, and Genku's in kind of the silvery red. Nice way to distinguish it. The cataphracts are fighting hard. And in this entire time, we can just see the dead man's Han army is slowly wheeling around and making its way over to the battlefield. But do remember that this, this free-for-all is going to be done by a score base. So it's not necessarily last man standing. It's going to be whoever gets the most kills. Um, so you know, being in the action right away is always a great idea. As we have some more Imperial Guard Spearmen now being thrown up against the Han light swords. And to be honest, I'm pretty surprised that the hand light swords have managed to survive this long. They're actually doing a pretty decent job at holding that front line, even though we do have some pretty crazy cavalry engagements. And also, on top of that, Hobbit has also committed a unit of these Axemen with these awesome-looking face masks to his cavalry fight to help out a little bit more. So it's not a bad idea to, to commit these guys. Because it basically just means you'll have more infantry there. And by... I don't know, this is actually just a special unit of cavalry here by Genku's. Um, army right here, the Northern Army Tiger Cavalry, pretty nice unit as they clash in once again. Oh, we also do have actually some uh, some ballistas right here. We had some ballistas as one just got destroyed. I think this ballista is trying to get into range to shoot the artillery. It's just not working too well. Oh my God, the army is getting closer and closer right here. This uh, this force that kind of deployed a little bit further away is slowly getting in. It is under heavy missile fire though. We do have some bolts coming in. Taking a few uh, a few bits of infantry right there, so it's not a bad position right here. Genku has deployed his entire 
Uh, oh my god, artillery coming in, but uh, yeah, you can see the Thundercat right there coming in. Yeah, all of these archers over here are just, you're unloading onto Dead Man's light infantrymen as they advance up. But we're also going to be getting a unit of Han Calafrax charging right into the side of Genku. And I feel like Genku has been sandwiched between two players. Look how deep that unit of cavalry got right there. My god, they just ran through them. And the rest of the archers try and retreat back as the cavalry is just running amok in the back ranks. Both the Thunder Carts right there have been destroyed and the cavalry is just going to be charging into the back line. Yeah, it seems like Genku has been completely enveloped right now and there's not really much hope for him, I don't think. However, as I said, do keep in mind that this is a kill basis right now. So sometimes being attacked by both players is a good idea because if you can get if you can take down enough of them then you're just gonna be so far ahead because there's not gonna be enough for the other two people to kill because they've kind of both eaten you up. So sometimes attacking two people, uh, being attacked by two people was actually pretty good. And I imagine that these hand shock troopers are going to be doing a ton of damage up against these, uh, these forest spearmen. Yeah, you can see they're doing a pretty good job. However, more cavalry has arrived for Harry Hobbit. And I think we're going to be seeing Genku's general going down. Uh, there's not many of his unit left. There you go, exactly. As I said, that the advisor went ahead and let me know that the uh, dude has died. We can also zoom in a little bit more as well. So both the red factions on this mini-map are going to be uh, the other two players. And the green is going to be Genku's force that is being currently enveloped by the cavalry. Somehow the archers are still managing to shoot though, which is kind of a little bit crazy. However, you know, they're, they're trying their best. And the infantry lines, I imagine, are going to be scattered soon as well. As the hand light infantry do move in closer and closer. Fighting archers now. Oh, no, these, uh, these archers, I don't think these, no, these are just heavy armoured infantry, yeah, from the hand. So pretty good. We also have some of the cool axemen as well coming up from the, this is the Lee clan. So I think this is Lu Bei's army, if I'm not mistaken, the, the Lu clan, because all the clans are, you know, it's not like heroes like it is in Total War Three Kingdoms. In this Rise of the Three Kingdoms mod for Medieval 2, they're kind of all clans, which is basically the same thing, but there's not like kind of one figure at the head. Which is definitely an interesting way to do that, but for someone who's maybe a bit more of a novice at the time period, it's kind of hard for me to, you know, determine, you know, oh, that, that is this person and that faction's this faction. You know, it's much easier for me as, as a noob on the history to kind of, you know, just identify with a few characters leading certain houses. The Archer Fire is really coming in as well and doing so much damage to your artillery as well. It would not be a bad idea, and I think that's exactly what they're doing. Yes, yeah, it's a really smart move here by Dead Man. He's using his artillery to hit both the players, and it would be a really good idea to focus all of your missiles down on this point as well. Because one of the amazing things you can do in free-for-all, if you see the other two people fighting, if it's a free-person uh, free free-for-all, or even just in free-for-all in general, when you see a bunch of your enemies fighting, if you focus all of your missiles, all of your artillery on the clump of them fighting then you basically end up getting double the kills because no matter what you hit in the battle you'll be hitting an enemy force which is i think pretty pretty important to try and focus down so you have to worry about any friendly fire and every kill you get in that big clump is going to be worth it oh amazing we have some glaive infantry here as well as they charge forward yeah, it seems like Genku has just been completely enveloped. And now we're going to have to have uh, Hobbit and his uh, his army, which is kind of, I guess, taking them the brunt of... Yeah, I thought, oh my god, these artillery hits are absolutely disgusting. Look at that. Yeah, I feel like Hobbit's, you know, has, has taken the main brunt of Genku's defense, whereas Deadman kind of just came up and cleared up what was ever, like, what was really left of the battle. You know, the, I feel like I feel like Genku's army was a lot less, a lot weaker on this side. But that meant that you know, Deadman got some pretty easy kills in this battle because by the time he turned up to the engagement, there was really only a handful of archers here, which were easy pickings for his Calafrat cavalry, and then maybe you know one or two units of infantry. Whereas Hobbit, who kind of wiped out the major part of this defensive army on the hill, you know, he fought the the, the infantry, the artillery, and everything else. Genku does still have one unit of infantry left and he's going to be charging in bravely the Fall on Hope. I mean, I guess the Fall on Hope has been gone, then and gone. Because they're normally the first ones in. The last stand, I'll call it then. Fighting some of his cavalry. Uh, does he have anything left? I think his cavalry is actually still fighting over here. Or is this Dead Man turning up? No, this is Hobbit's cavalry. I imagine 
killing the, the remnants of, of Genku. And there we have it. Genku has now been wiped out. It's, it'd be really nice. Oh, we also have the artillery coming off here as well. Oh, that hit like one dude of a back man. How lucky must, unlucky must you have been? It just goes over everyone else's head and just clips you. And you get taken out. The artillery is also pretty far down, but because it is so far away, it might mean that the ballistas don't actually focus this because it doesn't have the angle to hit these. So hopefully this artillery can indeed get some good shots off as the army has now fully booed up. But the crazy thing is that, you know, maybe, who knows, Genku might have been able to kill enough to claim himself victory. It does seem like the Hobbit is going to be extremely aggressive right away. We're going to be getting the spears going down though for Deadman's army. The, the men in green are going to be holding firm as the infantry come off. The ballista continue to focus down. They manage to break the spear line pretty effectively and continue on in this engagement. Not a bad little charge right there. More reinforcements turning up. We have some more heavy spearmen back here. These really, really cool looking Imperial troops right there as well. I love their shields. They look really, really good. And they're going to be charging forward to, I guess, envelop the defenses of Dead Man. Not a bad plan, because if you can get on the back of a lot of these missiles, um, you're going to be able to do so much damage. You can see these archers are unloading their quivers. And there's like four or five units, but there's not really a lot back here to stop these guys. You only really have a couple units of infantry, so if you can get some cavalry around the side, which it does look like, uh, which it does look like Hobbit does have, is he's going to charge into this hand Calafrak unit. If he can kill a lot of these, of which that charge was very effective, my god. If he can take out all the cavalry from Deadman, then he can just run amok in the background because there's only a handful of units, and I think that's exactly all. Genku is still alive with one unit of archers somehow, <laughs> causing a real uh, nuisance back here because it's, it's tying up like two units of uh, this cavalry, and they're called the Unstoppable, so I imagine they must be pretty goddamn good, right? But this entire time, you know, there, there is gaps appearing, and if they can be, uh, you know, exploited. There's a lot of free kills back there to achieve. Again, we'll zoom in even more right now. So, not, even though everything is kind of red, but if you guys want to check that out. I love the look of the arrows as well. You can see just going overhead. Looks so cool. Oh, that was a big hit by the artillery. And another one coming in. That is, if you guys are into medieval 2 porn, that is it right there. We have the ballistas going up, but the ballistas just don't seem to be taking out the uh, the infantry as effectively. I mean, I think one of the main points of the ballistas is to kind of counter-snipe artillery, take them out, and then kind of just have the artillery advantage. Hobbit's cavalry right here. Oh no, Deadman saw it before they could run him. That was perfect. If he could have just quickly gone in and hit these guys, the crossbows are immediately going to be changing focus as well. Killing this cavalry is kind of imperative that they win. And if they can get one volley off, it's going to be so big, but I don't think they are. Oh, Hobbit's cavalry is going to manage to engage this. Are we going to still be able to shoot though? No, I think that was a false shot right there, unfortunately. We do still have more missiles coming in, though, but they are a little bit slow, and, you know, this cavalry has been depleted, but they've really missed their opportunity there as the hand heavy swords kind of come in and cut off a few of their soldiers along the front line as well. Wow, look how good this armoured infantry is from Hobbit. They've just made a big dent in the spear wall of the Alu clan. Wow. Really, really effective stuff. These forest spearmen have gone off onto the left flank a little bit more effectively. We do also have some more of Hobbit's cavalry right here. I think this is his general unit, the Northern Armoured Cavalry. They've managed to segregate a unit of infantry here, the poor, poor hand swordsmen. One of the, the, the amazing things in Medieval 2 is that like heavy cavalry can just go ham. There's no like rock, paper, scissors really. Well, there, there is a rock, paper, scissors, but I feel like cavalry just trumps all. Much like it should in the time period, you know, heavy horse was always as strong, you know, as anything, you know, if, if you could have more horses, generally you would take them. The horns are going on as more and more, ca more, and more cavalry is being committed. I'm still so impressed that the, uh, the, the front line for the greens just got killed so effectively. The archers are still alive, as I think most of the cavalry has been killed. And now we're going to be having a, la a large reinforcement. They finally managed to deal with Genku's missiles in the back line. And now they can advance forward to get involved in this battle. You know, the battle lines are extremely thin at this point. Yeah, it'd be so nice if they were all different colours, but unfortunately Medieval 2 doesn't do that. So we can't really see on the map um, who's who. And we can't even press space to highlight them as well. 
The artillery is still shooting up there. And really all that's left is going to be kind of this cavalry right here and a handful of missile units as well. However, this cavalry is looking very strong. They've managed to kill like a handful of infantry units and now they're going to be rear charging as well into some more infantry. So even though they might not be the last man standing, this isn't like Warhammer. There is no kind of bonus for being the last man standing if you're just done by score resolution. But these artillery shots coming in. So even though there are only a handful of units left for uh, Hobbit now, he just wants to try and kill as much as he can because I imagine he probably has the most kills at this current point because he killed a large portion of Genku's army. So if he can go ahead and take out, you know, a couple hundred more men, I think that might seal the deal for him. And as well as that, you know, these missiles are really kind of ill defended now as well. So if he can get his cavalry kind of to go around the side whilst his archers hold the infantry in place, there's still plenty more kills to be had. Look how crazy this cavalry fight was as well between Genku and Hobbit. Can't believe Hobbit still had as much cavalry as he did coming out of that battle. And the artillery, yeah, knows the, 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 the main issue right here to minimize the kills. You want to be trying to kill this cavalry as quickly as possible as the infantry does just come running in a muck right now. And uh, cavalry charging as well. Yeah, infantry that's not braced is going to struggle. But as it looks at it, a lot of this cavalry did just go down right there. We also have a pretty big engagement as well as a lot of these bowmen are now having to pull out their weaponry to fight away against these forest spearmen. I'm surprised Hobbit is not going for this big vulnerable load of missiles back here, but I guess it's very hard for him to come around, especially when he's under as much missile fire as he is. It's kind of difficult to get these guys around. Looks like he is getting some good charges off though into the side of infantry blocks, but these guys were braced this time. And you can immediately see just how much more effective these guys are when they are braced, getting a ton of kills there. As this cavalry does fall, fall away from battle. And the, yeah, the cavalry is just going to continue to cause an issue. We also have some more forest archers here as well. It does seem like they've been caught maybe by one... Yeah, there's one unit of cataphracts right here. The lone horseman chasing them down. Which is kind of funny. Another cavalry charge right here. Oh my god, I did so much damage on these spearmen. They just were not braced. And these cataphracts just did so much damage. And that means so much as well. Because every single kill, I imagine, will help out so massively. The archers causing some issue. I and mean, there's still so many bowmen left up here, though. With the artillery coming in as well. I, I definitely think, obviously, the dead man will be the last man standing. As we watch these artillery shots coming in and out of the battlefield. Yeah, it's another wonderful, uh, another volley coming in. Yeah, you can just see they're killing them out so much. Okay, guys, well, it looks like the battle is basically rounded up. Now there's all the cavalry dead as well. No, the cavalry is still somehow running amok, and he's managed to get onto archers. Wow, this cavalry is just doing so much in this battle. I was going to skip ahead, but I think this cavalry is still got a lot to play in this role, so I guess let's stick with it for now to get another good charge in. They're eager as well. I don't understand how they're still eager. They need to get out of here, though, as more and more of these guys are coming up. Oh, now they're going to come finally getting onto this back line. All these archers need to change their focus on this. Exactly what they're doing. Bring them down. Bring them down. But they're going to get another charge off. Wow. That's really effective and then immediately get the head out of there, I think, before infantry climbs them up. And this is going to show the strength of the cavalry, but it's not like the cavalry is just untouched though as well. The cavalry is being taken out pretty effectively. You know, every single charge, they're getting more kills than they're losing, obviously, but they're starting to you know, dwindle away every couple times. Um, and now there's only four of them left. So cool, let's go ahead and skip ahead to the end of the battle now. It basically looks like that uh, the hand is going to be the last man standing. The last couple of artillery shots. And I think it's just going to have a few of these horsemen roaming around the battlefield. However, if anything else crazy does happen, I will bring it back to you guys. Okay, guys, the battle is over. And as you can see, Hobbit did manage to claim first. Genku being attacked by two people allowed him to come second. And then Dead Man. There just wasn't enough for him to kill at the end. And that's one of the reasons I really love watching free-for-all battles. Because you could be, you know, just being you know, trying to wait off not to get involved as heavily but that will mean that you end up losing these battles because you don't get to kill enough people there just wasn't enough at the end you look there's only what like there's like 140 kills in it for second and third uh which is pretty goddamn crazy and he obviously had the most men left remaining as well which was even more crazy so if we take a look at the kills as well we can only see genki's army but let's see who wrapped up the most the casualties inflicted we have this unit of camp crushers i have no idea what that unit was but they got 225 
five kills, so I imagine they did pretty decently. And then just a whole bunch of 100 kills on these guys. Han, uh, Armored Infantry, almost 200 kills, which isn't too bad. Uh, the Thunder Car only getting 62, but I guess it was taken out kind of quickly uh, by the artillery by Hobbit. So yes, hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see more of this Rise of the Three Kingdoms mod, and I'll see you guys in the next one.